On this worksheet, we're going to be taking a look at the common ion effect. We're going to solve two problems. In the first problem, we're just going to be calculating the pH of a one molar HF solution. That's a weak acid. Um, we know it's a weak acid because the problem gives us a Ka. And this is just a straightforward weak acid pH calculation. has nothing to do with common ion. And then what we're going to do in the second problem is recalculate the pH of that solution if uh, assuming that we have 0.5 molar sodium fluoride that's been added to the solution. So this gives us a common ion in the solution and it's gonna give us a chance to see how the presence of the common ion uh, affects the pH of solution. So first thing we're gonna do, like I said, is just a really straightforward, normal pH calculation. We've got HF, which is our weak acid, reacting with water in equilibrium and it produces F minus and H3O plus. The HF, because it's an acid, it's just donating its uh, H plus. And we're going to make ourselves an ice table. Our initial concentration of HF is one molar. Uh, initially, we don't have any products at all. We're going to do minus X because we don't know how much of this is actually reacting. Minus X plus X plus X. And at equilibrium here, we're going to assume that X is really small. And so our HF calculation is just going to be 1. Uh, uh, again, our goal is to calculate pH. The pH is going to come from our X right here. The pH is calculated by taking the negative log of H3O+. Plus. And H3O plus is expressed right here in the equation in the ice table. So we're going to use the pH equal to the negative log of X. To solve for x, we're going to write an equilibrium expression. That's going to be our products over reactant. Our products are both x, so that's x squared, over our reactant, which is 1 molar. And our Ka value for this is 7.2 times 10 to the minus 4. So do the math on this, 7.2 times 10 to the minus 4. Oh, times 1, and then take the square root. We get 2.68 times 10 to the negative 2. That's our x value, so that's what we're going to use to do our pH calculation. Negative log of 2.68 times 10 to the minus 2. And our pH is... 1.57. So that's the pH of this solution uh, all by itself. Now what we're going to do in our second problem is recalculate the pH of this exact same acid, except for in this scenario we have 0.5 molar NaF. So first thing that we want to do is um, look at the NaF that's an ionic compound, so when we put it into water, it dissociates to make the sodium ion and the F minus ion. And the F minus ion is going to be our common ion. We can make an ice table for this. Um, you might feel like this isn't necessary because you might be able to do this in your head. Uh, but just, you know, in case you can't, I'm going to show you how this works. So initially with our NaF, we're starting with 0.5 molar NaF, and prior to anything happening, we don't have any sodium or fluoride ion. Because this is an ionic compound, this is not an acid, it's not a weak acid, it's not anything like that, this compound is going to completely dissociate, meaning that all of the NaF is just going to completely dissociate the stoichiometry in this process is one to one to one. So the amount of NaF that's dissociating, 0 0.05, that's how much Na we're making. That's also how much F minus we're making. And when this is all done, we're just going to do the math here. We're going to have no NaF. We're going to have 0.5 molar Na plus and 0.5 molar F minus. And the F minus, this is our common ion. So the F minus is going to have an effect on the pH of the solution. So now what we want to do is go back to our pH calculation. And our pH calculation is based on our HF, the acid. So what we need to do is make another ice table. We're going to rewrite this equation for the um, HF reacting with water as an acid. And in this ice table that we're making, our initial amount of HF is 1 molar. 
But in this ice table, because of the sodium fluoride, the NaF that's been added, we are starting not with 0 F minus, we're starting with 0.5 F minus. So this stuff is giving us an initial amount of F minus. And again, this is the common ion concept. Still uh, starting with 0 H3O plus. So for our change, again, we don't know what that reaction is. We don't know to the, uh, the extent to which this reacts. So we're still going to use X. We have 1.0 minus x, and we're going to assume that x is really small, and it's just 1.0. For fluoride, we have 0.5 plus x, because we're just doing the math down in this column. And again, same thing, we're going to assume that x is really small, so this is just going to be 0.5. And for H3O plus, it's going to be x. Now remember, again, our goal is to calculate the pH. The pH is the negative log of the H3O plus concentration, and in this ice table, the negative or the, the H3O plus concentration is coming from X. So again, we need to figure out what X is. We are going to use, just like normal, we would we're gonna use an equilibrium expression. Our Ka value is 7.2 times 10 to the minus 4. Ka value doesn't change. 7.2 times 10 to the minus 4, and that is going to be our products, which are x and 0.5 divided by our reactant, which is 1. And so now all we have to do is solve for x. 7.2 times 10 to the minus 4 times 1, and then divide by 0.5 we get x is equal to 0 0.00144. And again, that's what we plug up into our pH equation. Plug, up, plug in up here, not plug up in here. I'll plug this in to the equation, and our pH is 2.84. So let's take a look and see how this affected the pH. It looks like having the common ion present caused our pH to go from 1.57 to 2.84. So the common ion raised the pH of this solution. And let's think about that in terms of Le Chatelier's principle. Does that make sense? If we think about this as an equilibrium expression, actually let's look at it up here. If we think about this as an equilibrium expression, if we add product, such as if we add fluoride, that's going to shift the position of equilibrium to the left, which is going to decrease the F minus, and it's also going to decrease the H3O plus. And that's the really important part. Decreasing the amount of H3O plus causes the solution to be less acidic, which ultimately raises its pH.